how do we use Luminar Neo to seamlessly merge a photo with its exposure set for the interior with a photo exposed for the exterior? That is what we're going to solve in this video. In front of me I have five different exposures of this bedroom. My intention when I rattle off a series of frames like this on a tripod is to make sure I have correctly exposed information to bring back for the exterior and the interior and potentially any other overexposed highlights as well. I usually start with a pretty good base exposure and then I go two stops underexposed, one stop underexposed, one stop brighter and then two stops brighter. And the only thing that's changing is my shutter speed. And you can see all of that information in the palette in the top right here. So we have a minus one exposure value here. And if you look at the shutter speed, you can see this was 1 60th of a second. So my initial shot was 1 30th, 1 25th, 1 60th, 1 15th and 1 8th of a second. If we double click to open up this main shot and I come into the edit section, we're actually going to see what the original base image looked like as a raw file. So if we look at the interior, the walls and the ceiling, the bed, it's all slightly underexposed. But then if we look out of the window, we can see it's too bright, it's overexposed, as is the floor, this little rug here, and it's that that we need to correct. And the best way to do this in terms of image quality is to use the best parts from a series of images where you have the correct exposure for that particular area. So for example, if we open up the darkest shot from that series and we zoom to this section of the window, we can see that the outside, the exterior, is actually looking pretty good. Perhaps a little underexposed still, but it's not too bad. Whereas the interior looks dreadful. But then if we want the inside of the bedroom to look good, this one's probably just a little overexposed, but if we look at the walls, the ceiling, they all look so much better than the previous shot. But if we look at the exterior now, let's suppose we just wanted to try and recover some of that information outside, doesn't matter how far we drop that exposure down, we're not going to be able to bring that lovely rich blue in the sky. The information in the raw photo just isn't there to recover the exterior. So how are we going to solve this problem? Well, one option would be to take the five files, push them all into the HDR merge extension and see what pops out the other end. And hopefully we get a good blend between the interior and the exterior. However, from experience, while the results are very good, they're not quite the level that I would like to send through as a finished article to my architectural clients. They might be okay for real estate. However, we want to take things to the next level. So we are going to utilize the HDR merge tool Tool. we're going to use that to create a layer that we're going to combine with the best layer for the interior the best layer for the exterior and then the HDR merge layer is going to be a transitional layer and once we've combined those three layers together we should have a really nice result that we can then put our finishing touches on to create the finished beautiful photo that we'd send back to our client. Before I show you that technique I just want to show you a couple of other options of approaches you can take and where potentially you can go wrong doing this so I'll show you those first so you can avoid those mistakes. So let's start work on our brightest layer. I'll jump into the develop raw, double click the exposure to reset that. And we'll just make a couple of changes here to make sure that initially the interior is looking just about as good as it can look. Now we want to introduce a layer for the exterior that we can bring back in here. So we'll come back over to the plus icon, navigate to the photo that had the exposure for the exterior. Click it once so that Luminar loads it up and we can just push the opacity to 100 so that we can see it. And yes, the exterior is looking OK. We can jump into the develop raw and just have a little play around, maybe boost the shadows up because we were losing a lot of detail there in the wood. And as we boost the exposure, we're starting to lose detail in the sky. That blue we had before is starting to go gray. So let's grab the highlight slider and bring that down just so we're preserving detail out there. And now the only option we've got to bring this layer back in over the top of our original room there is just to use the mask. Come in, we can brush it, grab a brush, and we can try to paint back in the exterior. We've got this window here that we shouldn't forget about as well, so I'll put a line down there. And for the overexposed carpet here, we could grab the strength, just drop that down to about 50%, so that we can try to paint over this and reintroduce detail into the carpet. Hopefully you guys can see the problem here. Where we're bleeding over the edge of the window because we don't have a precise mask, we start to get that dark haloing, and if we actually start to try and cover up the curtain there, we get a brighter edge there. And if we tried to reduce the softness of the brush, like harden that edge up, and then come in and be more precise, 
with our masking and jump into the paint mode. So I try and paint this back in around the window edge as precisely as I can. You know, it's just not gonna work. One thing you can do to help maintain a straight edge is to click on one area, hold your shift key, and then click on another. So I could click here in the top corner and then click again in the bottom corner and you could try and paint your windows in that way. But around the framework here, we actually have a lot of complex geometry going on and also on the carpet here, going around the edge of the bed properly, it's gonna be a nightmare. And even if you can do it accurately, it's gonna be exceptionally time consuming. So what I'm gonna do is actually just ditch that layer. We're just gonna remove that. So the thing that stops us being able to blend those two exposures together that way is that transition zone where the highlight area meets the shadow area and you get that haloing going on. It's going to be very difficult to solve that. So that's where that HDR layer is going to come in. Rather than use it over the whole photo, we're just going to use it for those transition areas. Let me show you how we do that. I'm going to jump back into the catalog mode. I'm going to click on the first photo, hold shift, and then click on the last one to select all five. And all I'm going to do is just drag them over to the HDR merge tool. There may be some movement in the leaves if the wind was blowing. So I'm going to come in here. I don't need to worry about auto alignment because I shot everything on a tripod, nothing moved there. However, I may need to turn on ghost reduction, which helps if there's objects moving in our scene, such as leaves and trees. And here I have the option to select my reference image. So the one I want to choose is the one that I'm actually going to use for the exterior, which is this option here. And I know that because that is a minus two exposure value drop. I'm also going to turn on chromatic aberration reduction and I just click merge. And pretty soon inside the HDR merge folder, we should have that merged file appear for us to use here. And there we go, we have an HDR merged version, which does actually look way better than I expected it to. So if you are servicing, say, the real estate market and speed is of the essence in terms of getting these photos back, then this could be the solution for you. Literally just use the HDR merge as your base layer and then just make some final adjustments onto that photo, export it, send it back to your client, job done. However, we want to do a more refined approach for when the HDR merge extension doesn't actually spit out a file that you're happy with, that's when this technique is going to come in. So now we have this layer available to us, I'm just going to drag it into the same folder as the other architectural photos. And there it is there. And now I'm going to open up that base layer that we wanted to work on that looks pretty good for the room. Now I'm going to come over to the layers section, click the plus icon, and now I'm going to load that HDR layer on top of the room. And Luminar is going to drop that in initially with 50%. I can push that to 100 and drop it down. A little toggle back and forth of the opacity slider just to get a feel for what pixels you'll be introducing when you start to paint this layer back in. And if you focus on the windows and the frames around them, you can see that when I actually start increasing the opacity, Hopefully you'll be able to see that we can paint this layer in around the windows without it really standing out. The mid-tone exposures are probably just a little bit darker, but obviously that's an easy fix. So all we need to do is just come in, grab our paintbrush. I like to use a nice soft edge. And now we're going to do the same as what we did last time in terms of painting in that exterior. We can do the same for the carpet where it's overexposed as well. And although there's just a little bit of haloing starting to show up on the bed there. Overall, that transitional area is much less noticeable. And what you can do is just feather that effect just a little bit further beyond the windows as well, just to help smooth that in. And if we toggle our before and after of actually introducing that layer, you can see that that transition area is pretty believable. Now we just might want to come in and just Grab a point in the middle of the curve just to boost up those mid-tones a little bit, just to get the brightness level of the HDR layer, just to match that interior layer a little better. So here was our before, and here was our after. And again, depending on the balance between the needs of your client and the speed at what you want to get this pumped out at, this might be where you stop this process. However, I want to take things just that next level, which is going to be adding a third layer, and that is going to be the correctly exposed photo for the exterior. And then we can just roughly, very roughly now, paint that in over the windows. And because we have that transition layer, we're going to be able to beautifully and seamlessly have a finished photo that has the correct exposure outside the bedroom and inside. Let's have a look.
So we're going to come up to the plus icon again, select the photo that was exposed for the exterior, click on it once and again, here we go. We have that layer introduced. So here's our before, here's our after. To be honest, it's possible that the photo that was one stop brighter may have been a better option than this one because it is pretty underexposed even for the exterior. But look, it's an easy fix. We're just going to boost this up, make sure that we're not losing those highlights and bring the shadows up. And that's going to reintroduce some information into that wood area on the deck here. And again, I just want to have a little toggle of the hiding and showing of that exterior. And I'm just going to come to my mask options, brush, Now I just want to paint this in more towards the center of the window itself. You see I've gone over the edge there and that destroyed that nice transition that we had before. I've also done the same with the curtain as well, which is completely defeating the purpose. You just want to keep the reintroduction of this cleaner exterior file more towards the center of the windows themselves. You don't want to be painting around the frames because that's going to undo all of that lovely hard work that we put in of making sure that we had a transitional area. So let's do a little hide and show of the layer. And if I hide it again, you'll see how kind of washed out and tepid the HDR version looks. And then when I reintroduce the layer that's processed specifically for the exterior, things start to look a lot better. So we can do our original. Here's where we started from and here's where we've got to. Here is our before and our after. Before and after. Now we've got the exposure set correctly throughout the scene. I'm going to right click so that I can export this photo and I'm going to save it as a 16 bit TIFF in the Adobe RGB color space and that's gonna retain a lovely amount of detail in this file for me to continue and finish off my edit. So this is kind of a hybrid exposure blending with HDR method. It's very quick and one of the main benefits of this is not only leveraging from the simplicity of the HDR merge, but we don't have to suffer any of the consequences sometimes negatively associated with HDR merge. We're still able to use the original files for the exterior and the interior. We're simply using the HDR merge as a transitional zone. And then we can be much more rough and ready with those masks. I've literally just whipped around the window frames with the brush, masking in those new layers. And the end result is very good. It is similar to what we would have done if I had have taken a lot more time and a lot more precision with with my masks inside of Photoshop. So this exposure blended version is now a solid base onto which we can apply our finishing touches. So if you'd like to see how I finish this photo inside of Luminar and turn it into this, then you want to click on that video there to see those finishing touches. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in that video.